I'm a park ranger. I found something in Yosemite that can't be explained. The rocky dirt road crunched beneath the truck's tires as I drove through the dense forest, careful of the branches which overhung the path and scraped the windows. My eyes were darting around constantly, keeping an eye out for wildlife and fallen trees. This far into Yosemite, there weren't many people, but as a park ranger it's my job to patrol these woods and protect visitors from nature as much as possible. Not to mention protecting nature from them. Especially this time of year when unlicensed hunters are out, and clueless campers and amateur hikers are roaming alongside them. It's often a lethal combination. Just as I was thinking about amateur hikers, I saw a woman standing a little ways off the road. She was in a rock-strewn field on a slope leading up a hill to my left. Despite the fact that we were out in the middle of nowhere, she had no hiking equipment, no backpack, nothing. As I got closer, she saw me, but began to walk away, marching up the rocky slope. This far out in the middle of nowhere, I expected a wave or a hello at the very least. Most of the time if you're out here on foot you don't see anyone for days at a time. Hey, miss. Are you okay? I yelled, worrying she was suffering from exposure. Sometimes people get lost out in these woods and by the time you reach them they're nearly catatonic. I'd seen it before, men and women with a thousand yard stare. She didn't respond, instead continuing up the slope until she reached the top. Then she disappeared into the tree line. The woman's face looked familiar, I realized, and pulled up a file on my laptop. It showed people who had been reported missing in the area. It took a minute, but eventually I found the woman's file. There were photos that matched the person I had just seen exactly. Except her clothes were different. And the woman had been reported missing eight months prior. She should look considerably worse, I thought, especially considering her lack of supplies. These woods were harsh, brutal wilderness. Even experienced hikers and hunters had become lost in the area and had died from the elements. I quickly called into the station and told them what I'd seen, then grabbed my backpack and took off on foot, running up the rocky slope towards the trees. If she continued at the pace she'd been moving, I had a good chance of catching up with her. At the top of the hill I managed to find her tracks. I followed them into the woods, tracing a path through the trees. For almost an hour I followed her path through the forest, becoming more and more convinced that I should have caught up with her. I realized something was wrong, and I had lost the trail. It was like the woman had vanished. I kept moving forward, thinking maybe I would pick up her tracks again. This happened sometimes, I knew as an amateur hunter. The quarry's path would disappear occasionally only to reappear a little ways away. So I kept going, pushing aside branches and shrubbery, and moving ever deeper into the overgrown wilderness. And that was when I saw it. What the hell is that? I muttered to myself, not believing my own eyes as the object came into focus up ahead. It was a staircase that appeared out of the overgrowth, looking otherworldly in this environment. What is this doing out here? I realized I was talking to myself but couldn't help it. I also couldn't seem to help the fact that I was steadily moving towards the staircase in the forest, despite a growing feeling which told me I should stay away. The closer I got to the stairs, the more I felt as if someone was watching me. The hair stood up on the back of my neck and goosebumps rose on my arms as I approached, moving closer and closer until I was standing right in front of it. Strangely enough, the stairs looked relatively new. They appeared unassuming and normal in every way, except for their odd location. The wood was not weather-worn or moss-coated. It was clean and I would guess it had been built in the last 10 or 20 years, but the staircase ended after exactly 13 steps. It was a staircase leading to nowhere. It was an eerie sight out here, since I was well aware of how difficult it would be to construct them in the middle of nowhere. What was the purpose of them? Who would build them and why? Even as I was asking myself these questions, I found myself walking up the stairs. It was like I was in a dream, as my feet seemed to move involuntarily upwards, but the feeling of eyes on the back of my neck grew worse and worse with each step. And I could feel the weight of someone else's movements on the stairs with me, I was sure of it. Eventually the paranoia became so overpowering that I had to turn around, feeling as if someone or something was definitely right behind me on the stairs. But when I turned around there was no one there. Suddenly I felt terrified as hell, and started wondering what I'd been thinking climbing those stairs in the woods that shouldn't have been there. I started going back down, still feeling eyes watching me from all around. The trees nearby rustled with movement and I saw a vague shape moving behind them. Hurrying the remainder of the way down the steps, I called out to the figure, thinking it was the woman I had seen earlier. Miss, if that you? I've been looking all over for you? Are you alright? I asked the dark figure in the shadows, but it didn't move or respond. Instead it just continued to watch me. Okay, lady, I can't help you if you don't. Suddenly it occurred to me that the figure in the shadows was too tall to be the woman I'd seen earlier. 
it looked to be a person at least six and a half feet tall, maybe more. And they were ducking behind a tree so as not to be seen clearly. The thing stood up even taller and I realized it had been crouched down. It was enormous, its form impossible to examine in the low light. But it was definitely watching me. And there were more of them, I realized, my heart pounding faster and harder until it felt like it was going to beat right out of my chest. I spun around, looking at the forest all around me, seeing shadow shapes everywhere. For a few long moments I was frozen, unable to move or breathe or think. And then I saw a long-fingered hand pushing back the foliage, preparing to emerge. That woke me up from my trance. Whatever these things were, I could tell they were not benevolent or good. They were creatures of darkness, luring people to them so they could feast on their minds. I tore my gaze away from it and began to run, racing through the trees, I could sense them following after me. A platoon of lanky, impossibly tall creatures with long fingers. Were they the ones who had created the staircase out here? Were they aliens? Sasquatches? I had no idea, but every time I looked back over my shoulder I saw them gaining on me, vague shapes moving so quickly they blurred and were tough to make out. That was when I realized it was getting dark outside. But that didn't make sense, since when I'd set out it had been the early morning hours, around 8 a.m. Checking my watch, I saw it was no longer functioning, nor were my cell phone or GPS devices working, with no other choice but to keep running, that's what I did. Bolting through the forest until eventually I found the rocky slope beside the dirt road where I'd left my truck, I ran right over the edge of the cliff, so terrified and frantic that I didn't see it coming. The things were just behind me by that point, and I was almost ready to resign myself to dying trying to fight them. Instead, I went tumbling down the rock-strewn hillside, somersaulting and hitting my elbows, knees, shoulders, and skull off the boulders and stones. A mini avalanche ensued and I went down hard, face planting as my feet were unable to keep up with my momentum. A sharp pain struck me in the forehead and I tasted blood in my mouth as my vision went dark. I laid in a pile of rubble and went to sleep. When I woke up, there was a park ranger standing over me, asking if I was okay. The weird thing was, I didn't recognize him. You look familiar, he said, furrowing his brow. What's your name? I told him and his jaw dropped, his face turning a shade paler. It can't be. Everybody thought you were dead. Looking around, I saw my truck was nowhere to be seen. It was a different season as well, the trees were turning slightly yellow when I went into the forest, an early signal of autumn. But now they were bright green as they would be at the beginning of summer. What's the date today? I asked him. He told me, but I didn't believe him at first. You're making that up, I said, shaking my head. I just went into the woods for a couple hours to find the woman. That's when I remembered her again. Did anyone find her? Or is she still missing? Nobody's seen any woman. Just like nobody has seen you for eight months. His eyes were suspicious and I realized he thought I was losing my mind. Or had lost it out in the forest. I shook my head and looked back into the woods. We gotta get a search party out there. Didn't you hear me? If you saw a woman when you went out there, she's long gone by now. My eyes stayed fixed firmly on the trees in the distance. Not for her. There's something else out there. I couldn't resist the pull of it and started wandering back up the rocky slope. It felt like I was an iron filing and that staircase was a strong magnet, drawing me towards it. We all need to go to it. The other ranger grabbed my arm and pulled me back, restraining me, yelling at me to calm down. It took five more men to get me to stop, and to get me into the hospital. They keep telling me what I saw wasn't real. That I was suffering from exposure. That I got lost in the forest and hit my head, suffering a concussion. The doctors say I hallucinated all of it, but I know what I saw. And as soon as I get out of this hospital, I'm going back.